In this video, I'm going to show you different ways to make this cool glow effect inside Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm also going to be giving away a preset and a project file that you can use in your edits, so be sure to stick around to the end. Now, there's several ways to make text glow inside Premiere, but by far one of the easiest ways without any third-party plugins is to use multiple stats of the drop shadow effect. Shout out to Smartimba Graphics for this specific technique, but let me go ahead and show you how it works. Now, over here in Adobe Premiere, I have a 1080p timeline, and I'm just going to go ahead and take the text tool and then write out a text. I'm just going to write out Premiere. I'm going to click on the text graphic and then go to the properties panel and click on the actual text, then go down and change the fill to white. And we do want this to be white to make it easier to change later on. Now, I like to click on the center align text button as well as the center text vertically button to make sure that the text is anchored to the middle. After that, you can scroll down to align and transform and then use the center text vertically and horizontally button. Now this takes the text to the center of the program monitor. And by the way, the font that I'm using is Montserrat Black Italic. Now I'm gonna head over to the effects panel and search for the drop shadow effect. Now you can drag the drop shadow effect over to the text inside your timeline. Now in order to set this up, we need to change the shadow color to white and then change the distance to zero. And the main property that we're concerned about here is the softness. So we want to duplicate the drop shadow effect and increase the softness value by a certain amount. So we're going to start off at a softness of 10. Now that we've set up the first drop shadow, I'm just going to click on it and then press Control C to copy this drop shadow effect. Now, something really important about copy and paste, and especially inside Premiere, is that when you copy something, that thing stays in the clipboard until something else takes over. Now, what that means is that because I've copied this instance of this drop shadow effect the first time, I can just keep pressing Control V and we're gonna have more drop shadows pasting from the clipboard. And it's the same with anything really. If I copy this graphic, I can just go ahead and keep pressing Control V and I'm gonna keep pasting that instance that I copied every single time. So now again, back to effect controls, we copy and then we paste and then we adjust the softness of the top drop shadow. So I'm just gonna change the softness to 50 and then I'm just going to paste. And now as we can see, the top one is 10. So we know this is the one that we just pasted right now. So I'm just going to change that to 100. So as you can see, we've done 10, 50, 100. And then you can repeat this stuff for 200, 400, and 1,000. And as you can see, that's the same setup that we have right here. And now that we've set all that up, we need a global way to change all the color at the same time. And that's why it was important that we made both the text and the drop shadow white in the first place. So now we can head over to effects and search for the tint effect and go ahead and apply that to the text. So if we want to change the color of everything, we just go ahead to the map Y2 and then we map it to something else. So in this case, I can go over to the greens and then click OK. And now we've mapped all that white to green, essentially making everything a green text. And again, why this is important is because each of these individual drop shadows has their own color, which is all white. So if we were to go to the properties panel and click on the text itself and change the color of just the text, you'd be able to see what happens right here. The text itself is red and all those drop shadows are white and it wouldn't work. So I'm just going to change the text back to white and then enable our tint effect. And we can use that effect to change the color to anything else. Now, one thing we can do is make this a template so that we can use this over and over again. So before I make it a template, I'm just going to change the tint color back to white. So white is just going to be like our default color. Then I'm going to double click on where it says effect controls. So it's going to give me a full screen and now I'm going to hold control and then click on each of these effects. I'm just going to hold control, scroll down, and then make sure I select all the effects that we used for this particular thing. So I'm just making sure I select all the drop shadow effects as well as the tint effect. And then I'm going to right click on the tint effect and say save preset. So I can just name this glow tint preset. I can just spell that correctly. And now we can just OK that. I'm going to double click effect controls again to back out of full screen. And now when I write another text which has a color of white, what I'm going to do is go over to effects and search for our glow preset. And now I can just drop that over to the Louise. As we can see, we have that glow effect right there. Another way we can make this a template is just to right click on the graphic and go to export as motion graphic template. Once we do that, go ahead and give it a nice name like glow tint text, and that's going to add it to your graphic templates folder. So if I go over to graphic templates and I just reduce the thumbnail size right here, we can see the glow text effect and I can just drag this over to our timeline 
and we can see we have the exact effect right here. So you can choose to animate this and then save it as a preset, but that's completely up to you. If you're looking for the shortcut to master video editing, inside DP Plus Academy, I've put together everything you need to go from absolute beginner to getting paid to edit videos for a living. You get instant access to over 10 hours of Premiere Pro training, an After Effects masterclass, real world footage to practice with, and a brand new four and a half hour workflow course, amongst others all designed to make you more confident and way faster in your edits. And we're not just throwing courses at you. I host live weekly sessions where we go over your edits and you know exactly what to improve. Go ahead and check it out in the description below. Now here's another way to make the text glow effect inside Premiere. And I'm gonna show you different variations so you can understand how it works and how you can play around with it. So again, I'm just gonna take my type tool. I'm gonna type out Premiere in full caps. And then I'm gonna take my selection tool and I'm going to go over to use the center align text and center text vertically buttons again to make sure the anchor points in the middle. And then I'm going to go down to align and transform, make sure it's in the middle of the composition. So when I double click on this and I change the text to say pro, right? Premiere pro, you can see everything is still in place from the middle of the composition. So now that I have this graphic on my timeline, what I'm going to do is right click on it and go to nest. And then I'm just going to call it text and I'm going to say, okay. Now the reason I'm nesting this is so this can be like a template that I can change later on. Now for this method, instead of using the drop shadow effect, we're going to use the Gaussian blur effect instead. So this could be multiple stacks of the Gaussian blur or multiple layers of text with Gaussian blur on it. So that means I can just hold alt and click and drag to duplicate this nested sequence. I'm going to select this last two and I'm going to go to effects and throw in the Gaussian blur. I'm going to search for Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to throw in the Gaussian blur effect on it. So for this first one, I can start off with something like 50. And then for the next one, I can go to about 100. Now I'm just going to double click on this bar at the right to shrink everything to the minimum. So if I just double click on there, it's going to make all the text small. So now I'm going to select everything, hold Alt, and then move up to nudge the clip upwards. So now I can duplicate the bottom text again. And now we want to change that from 100 to 200 just to make it a little bit more. If I double click on this again, it shrinks everything and makes that easy for me. So as we can see, we have some sort of glow effect going on here. So what I could do is increase the blurriness for one of these texts, for example, this one that is 100, I can just boost it up and we can see we have a little more spread out glow going on here. Now, obviously you might wanna animate this. So what we need to do is nest this again. So everything is just gonna be one clip that we can apply effects to and do whatever we want. So I'm just going to right click on this, go to nest, and then I'm going to call it the master text. So now if we want to animate this or apply any transform effect, we can do that to this one nested sequence. And if we want to change the text, we just need to double click on this, go into any of these texts because we duplicated the same thing, right? And then now we can just change it, double click in here and then change it to something else. So for example, control. So if I go back to 1080s B timeline, we can see the text is different. Now this looks really good, but there's a problem because this can be a little bit tricky to make as a template that you can use over and over again. So for example, if I were to copy this text right now and paste on another part of the timeline and then go in to any of them, obviously, and then change the text inside it, if we go back to the main sequence, we can see that it changed for both of them. That's not what we want, right? We want them to be separate. Now I'm going to show you a better way to actually work with this, but in general, if you have nested sequences that you've duplicated inside your timeline in Premiere and you want them to be their own individual thing, what you're going to have to do is duplicate those nests in the project panel and then replace them with the one that is on the timeline. So let me show you what that looks like. Obviously, as we can see, these are two different things, but let's say I want this one to be different. I'm going to right click on this and go over to reveal and project. Then I'm going to right click on here and then duplicate. Now I'm going to click and drag and while holding alt, I'm going to come over to this particular nest right here on my timeline. Once I leave it, we can see we've replaced it, right? So if we had any effect on this, it wouldn't change. It just neatly replaced it without changing anything else. So it doesn't matter what effects I had on here, we're fine. But we're not completely fine because we went too nest deep. So if I go into this nest, we still have this text over here. So again, if I just double click on here, it makes everything shrink up. And as we can see, this text even though this is its own thing, these nested sequences that actually contain the text inside are still the same nested sequences that are inside this one as well. 
So that's not what we want. So we want to do the same thing for this one as well. So if I go in here, I right click, I reveal in project, and then I duplicate from the project panel. Now I can select all these, click and drag while holding Alt, and then it's going to replace everything. So now I'm sure it's actually its own thing because as it says right here, this is text copy one. And if we go in here, you can see this is not text copy one. I'm just going to double click here again. We can see right here. So that means that if I actually go into this first one and then I change this pro back to Premiere, when I go back to the main timeline, this should still be pro. As you can see, it's its own thing now. Now I show this to you so you can understand how nested sequences work, but how do we actually make this faster? And I'm gonna show you right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the copies that we made and I'm gonna say yes, so we don't need that. What we do need is this master text over here. Now, in order to make this a template that we can use every single time, we have to save this as a Premiere Pro project. Now, what I'm going to do is click on where it says master text here in the project panel, and then I'm going to go over to file and then export. And then we're going to see this option called selection as Premiere Pro project. Once I click on it, I'm just going to name this as glow template, and then I'm going to save. So now that we have that as a saved template, if you want to have separate instances, you're going to have to import that into our current project. So what I'm going to do right now is right click, go to import, and then we're going to locate where we saved that particular project and then open that. Now what's going to happen is it's going to give us this import project option where we can select how we want to import the project. So I'm just going to select create folder for imported items and then allow importing duplicate media. And this is really important to keep things organized. So I'm just going to say, okay. And now, as we can see, we have the glow template inside our Premiere Pro project. So I'm just going to take master text and drag it over to our timeline. As we can see, this is another instance of the master text. Now, if you want more, all we got to do is right click, go to import again, and then import the same project and with the same option. And that's it. Now it's created another instance of that entire nesting structure. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag another one. So now when I change the first one, I'm just going to go ahead and change the text color. So if I click on this and then I go ahead to change the text color over to red, and then we'll go back to the 1080p timeline, we can see that the only one that is affected is this one that I changed to red. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this one to green. So I'm just going to click inside Premiere and then I'm going to change this one to green. And then when we go back to the 1080p timeline, we can see that this is its own thing. And that's how you can have this as a separate project. Now, if we want to make this even easier, what we can do is go into our template project and make some adjustments. So here's what we can do. I'm going to go over to file and then open project. And then I'm going to open our template project. So as we can see, we're on our template project right here. So I'm just going to double click on master text. And what I'm going to do is go into any of this so I can get access to the text itself. Now, here's what's going to make this a whole lot easier. If I click on this and I go over to graphic and titles and I choose this option called upgrade to source graphic, once I click on it, now what's going to happen is that this graphic will exist in the project panel. So anywhere I use this particular graphic in this project is going to have the same property. Now, here's how we can use that to our advantage. If I go back to master text, I can drag this graphic and place it over here and then just disable it, right? I, I don't really need it, but I just want to make it easier to change the text properties without clicking too much. In fact, what we can do is go into master text and drag it over to the new item button, right? So once we do that, we have this exact sequence inside another sequence. So we can actually just rename this one to master final, I guess. And now what we could do is actually put this right here. So anytime we import this project, this is just going to be like a control layer to help us change the properties of the text easier. So I'm just going to right click on this and rename and change it to control. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to right click on this and go over to enable just to make sure that this particular instance is disabled and it's not part of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this hamburger beside the glow template project. And then I'm going to save the project and then I'm going to close the project. So now we're back to the main project that we were actually working on. And then I'm going to import that template once again. So if I click on import and then I import the template and with the same options, what's going to happen right now is now we have the graphic right here. So here's what we can do with that. Now that I'm back to our 1080p timeline sequence, what I can do is actually just drag our master text final over here 
And now it would only take one click. So once we double click on it, we have the master text containing all the glow effects. And now we have a control layer that is a source graphic. So once we change the properties here, it's gonna change inside our text as well. So watch what happens when I click on this, even though it's disabled, it doesn't matter. Once I click on this, I click inside Premiere, and then I go down to fill and I change the fill to red. As you can see, it's red right here. In fact, we can actually just cut this and take it directly to the main 1080p timeline and we're still gonna be fine, right? So if I click on this, I can actually change what it says. So I can just double click inside the properties panel. If I just double click on here, I can say hello. And as we can see, it changed right here just by adjusting the source graphics. So if I click on here, I change it back to, let's say we make it blue and I click okay everything is gonna be blue and it's still its own instance. It's not affected by anything else. It's just its own thing. An even easier way is actually to uncheck this little thing right here. So that will help us to unnest this master text final here. So this is checked and we drag this in. What's gonna happen is that it's gonna come in as one clip. And then we have to go in to find this little graphic right here. What we can do instead is just uncheck this and then drag the master text final over here. And as you can see, we still have our source graphic that is already disabled, but we can just click on it, go ahead to the fill, and then we can change the fill to whatever we want. And we can change the text as well. So you just go to the properties panel, double click on the text, and then you can basically change it to whatever you want. So you don't even have to go inside the nest. It's just something that you set up once and then you drag and drop and you're completely gonna be fine. And again, you can play around with this however you want. So for example, I can go in and get a directional blur. Then I'm gonna drag it over to one of this text, go over to effect controls. I'm gonna disable the Gaussian blur effect. And then I'm gonna increase the blur length of the directional blur and then change the direction. So as you can see, we're getting a different effect just by adjusting those parameters. If I go back to 1080p timeline, you can see we've made that adjustment. And if we wanna adjust the text or anything like that, we can just click on our control layer, which is disabled by the way, but we just need to click on it in the properties panel, go down, and then we can change the text to whatever we want. And as you can see right here, we can easily change that without going deep into those nests. And in case this is confusing, again, this button right here is just to unnest. So if I wanna drag a nested sequence inside my timeline, and I want the content of that nested sequence to come in instead of the itself, I can just check this button right here. And all you gotta do is set this up once and then you can tweak it however you want. But technically you don't need to do anything because you're watching this video right now. You can just download these presets, download the project file, and then use them in your projects. Now this is what our text looks like on different footage using the first method. And this is what it looks like using the second method. And of course you can play around with the blending mode. Like for example, I can change this over to lighting or screen and we can have a different effect here. But if you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one.